au natural, American style, landing strip or Brazilian, to shave or not to shave, that is the question. Why do our short and curlies grow where they do, when they do, and let's take a look at what science says about the pros and cons of hair removal. So, first up, the science. Pubic hair sprouts up under the arms and around the groin at different times for different people. For girls, it's roughly between the ages of 8 and 14. For boys, roughly 10 to 15. And it's stimulated by those ever-changing pesky hormones. But why do we bush up in just those places? We don't actually know for sure, but this is our current best bet. You've got two types of sweat-producing glands, eccrine and apocrine. Your eccrine glands produce a kind of watery sweat that helps us keep cool, and you find them all over your whole body. Your apocrine glands pump out a different type of sweat. It's thicker, waxier, contains fat, and scientists think that it's this type of sweat that stimulates the growth of pubic hair. Which makes sense, because you find your apocrine glands underneath your armpits and around your groin, and they only start pumping out that sweat when you hit puberty. The important question, the big one, why are pubic hairs short and curly? They are curly because they have a different shape to the rest of the hair on your body. That is normally round in cross-section, but pubic hair is squeezed by the hair follicle, which makes it oval in cross-section and causes it to curl. And they're short because they grow for a lot less time than the hair on the rest of your body. That grows for around seven years, whereas pubic hair only grows for six months, the hair follicle dies and it falls out. To shave or not to shave. Oh, and to clarify, I'm not talking about trimming here. I'm talking about any method of hair removal, be that shaving or whatever. Let's start with the benefits of not shaving. First things first, if you shave it off, you're gonna be removing the original benefits it evolved to have. I've done a video previously all about why we have hairy pits, and it kind of applies for hair elsewhere as well. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one, but the short and curly version is this. One, it reduces the friction on your skin as you rub flesh against flesh. And I'm talking about walking here, people. Two, it catches dust and bacteria before it contacts with your skin. Three, and it helps wick sweat away from your skin, which is good for two reasons. One, it helps protect your lymph nodes from overheating, and two, it releases pheromones. Also, in the not shaving camp, you've got the dangers of shaving to consider. I found a study that said that the number of pube removal related injuries have risen fivefold in the US between 2002 and 2010. And female injuries in 2010 were estimated at over 1,700, with the most common related injury being laceration from razors. Ouch. Doctors say that removing pubic hair irritates and inflames the hair follicles that are left behind, causing microscopic open wounds. Combine that with the warm, moist environment you've got down there, and it is a perfect environment for bugs. We're talking streptococcus, herpes, and according to a recent study in a French clinic, the spread of a viral infection known as molluscum contagiosum. Finally, in this growing, not shaving camp, you've got the argument that you would be removing something that's evolved to be a sign of our sexual maturity. But whatever our ancestral brains are telling us, there's evidence, for men at least, that the full bush is going out of fashion. Researchers from George Washington University had the arduous job of going through piles and piles of Playboy magazines for science. They discovered that although around 95% of centerfolds in the 60s, 70s and 80s went au naturel, that figure is now around 10%. What's the rest of the to shave side of the argument? Well, I couldn't actually find too many papers on the benefits of hair removal. It's all mainly anecdotal. Many people said it's just a practical thing to do as underwear gets smaller and smaller and jeans get lower and lower. And guys, there is a paper I found that shows that gay and straight men are both increasingly removing or trimming their hair because they just believe it looks better like that. There is one other well-quoted paper about the benefits of the Brazilian and it involves these guys, Phthiris pubis, pubic lice. The paper says, 
The drop in pubic lice in women appears to be most dramatic around the year 2000 and coincided with the introduction of extensive waxing techniques such as the Brazilian in women in the United Kingdom. But the figures in the paper actually show that the number of cases of pubic lice dropped from 0.5% to 0.15%, so from rare to super rare. Plus, it's just based on one small group of women in one clinic in Leeds, England. So, there you have it. Our ancestors may have used their pubic hair to attract the opposite sex, but today more and more gals and guys say they feel sexier if they indulge in a little bit of personal topiary. While there are some biological advantages to keeping it, they don't seem that big a deal. We don't get inundated with cases of overheating lymph nodes or friction burns. So at the end of the day, it's your hair. Just like Mr Miyagi, you can wax on or you can wax off. The armpit. What's it for and why is it hairy? Great question, Kevin. Now, I was thinking of maybe calling this one um, how the smell of your sweat helps you score or not.